Hello everybody, welcome back to Emma Void's Let's Play of Pyre. Last we left off, we had sent Pamatha back up to the surface with a uh, liberation rite, and now we've got one more uh, rite to do against, what are these guys, um, Sir Deluge, that's it, and his team, before we can go back and do another liberation rite. So, for now, let's check in with Falcon Rom. Oh, guys, can't help but wondering whatever happened to that member with the wings. You know the one. I guess she's kind of pretty, maybe, I suppose. She's still around by chance, because, uh, um, well, anyways. Sorry, Ron. Alright. Um. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize. Oh, that's okay. So, somewhere here we've got rights. Trieste's plume. Oh yeah, we've also got Solium's horn. I forgot about that. We should go ahead and drop both of those because we don't really need them. Can't even really use them, right? That's Jody. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, more Stardust is always good. Molly Guaitai, yeah. Flame Leech, Shooting Star, Thorned Knot. Yeah. Not really anything that I feel like we should. Ooh, although, the shooting star, I forgot about that. Hmm. Well, Felicita. must be our lucky day here, or I don't know what, Dad. Real quick, I forgot to grab a couple of uh, free fruits. Hey, you guys forgot something? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I also need to give him that molten glass. And... Down berry. Cool. To do imps and downside talismans. So we got a few things in the book rights to read then. Let's see. Slug markets. They are natives in this land, with some capacity for thought, an odd keen instinct for the mercantile. Suspicious creatures, but not disagreeable entirely. From time to time we make exchange with them. They lust for coins, for the imperial soul, though why they do not say. We speculate it is a delicacy. It serves us little purpose here, whilst their slug market wares are sometimes valuable. The creatures appear drawn to places where the heavens shine the brightest, perhaps they, because they know we are as well. What they want exactly is unclear. We taught them of our lands, yet they remain preoccupied with simpler things. Hmm. Indigenous imps. Special mention must be given to the downside's most prolific native creature, which we call the imp. With all respects to our comrade, Haub, an imp himself, possessing of extraordinary intellect, most imps are driven by the simplest impulses to eat, to drink, to procreate, to move, and to survive. These creatures, then, are symbols of this place. They are far more resilient than they seem. Though wild by their nature, they, like all of us, can learn. Haub insists that imps are willing to be put to work. Like other aspects of the downside, they wish more than to exist, but to exist with purpose. And the talismans. Survival often is conflated with the physical. When we think of survival, we assume the need to sustain our bodies or improve our bodies. The strong survive. But, and take it from an alpha chief, there are different kinds of strength. The spirit is what drives us. By comparison, the body's impulses are weak. Here in the downside, faith is found in limited supply. Trinkets and mere baubles that would barely fetch a price in our homeland, here are talismans. Seek talismans that mean something to you. Hold on to one that you hold dear. 
It shall reward you with remain reminders of your faith, your power, and your potential. Oops. Alright. So, we've got Bay at max enlightenment. Meaning, unless I get somebody else up to max enlightenment, <laughs> she's um, gonna be the one who has a chance to get out of here next. Okay, so, we got Wolfred with his link on, uh, Sir Gilman with his scale. Can we upgrade that anymore? No, no we can't. And Tizo's ring, let's go with that one. the right. Everything is set for the right to commence, and all is quiet amid the sweltering confines of the nest of Triesta. All there is left to do is wait for nightfall to set it. You observe Sir Gilman sliding back and forth, back and forth. You sense something is weighing on his mind. This night, this night, this night, this night is not a night at all. This night betrayed his former commander, abandoned his brethren of the Sea Dominion. But what is knighthood even? What is knighthood if it means having to follow such a craven as that Sir Deluge? Cease this nonsense, Gilman. Focus on the right. Focus on the right. Focus on the right. He notices you, finally. Oh, Master Rita! This knight did not see you there just now. Such was his preoccupation with the task at hand. Know that this knight stands prepared. He has no misgivings whatsoever when it comes to battling his ex-triumvirate. Please, consider letting this knight participate, for he has honor to restore. Then, a glimmering within the sky draws your and his attention. And here we are. The stars once more have mustered wherewithal to usher in the rites. The sky grows dimmer by the day, and age is ending. Surely you must know by now that you shall never all be free. Yet still you struggle to fulfill some senseless plan. But I digress, of course. Some of us still honor the tradition. Mm -hmm. Some of us hold dear the teachings of the scribes. Gilman! Still not abandon your new friends like all your other duties and responsibilities? Sir Deluge wrestles with his mask for a time. Th th this knight is most surprised that you have courage even to show yourself. You speak of courage, Sir Deluge, but this knight has little else to say to the likes of you. That figures, Gilman. You are no knight at all. You are a teensy minnow swimming in a sea of minnows many, many times your size, and with much more honor, too. Then something comes over Sir Gilman. But just as soon it fades, Sir Gilman slinks away. It's disgraceful! Your night wings! You, you are stupid till you have taken that one in, and you are no good at the rights. And another thing! We do not fear you! Mm hmm. The worm doth protest too much, I think. So, I was thinking. Let's go with Wolfred, Gilman, and Tizo. So we'll put Gilman up front. Sir Gilman. And then. Volfred. Volfred. And Tizo. Tizo. 
With that out of the way... Scream! Tizo is prepared to defend the honor of Sir Gilman against his ex triumvirate. Come then, Nightwings! Show this knight how you defend the honor of that miserable minnow whom you harbor! Ungod! Ah, ridiculous. Commence! Twas the first banishment! Plans do oft go awry. Oh, shush you. Let's take that, you foul knaves! Ha! Closer to victory. Shame. Perhaps you are unworthy. Oof. All banished. Oh, I almost pity what transpired there. One triumvirate stands unopposed. A wave of unexpected action from Sir Delius. Stroke of luck is all. The worm knight somehow did it. Ah. Their fire weakens. Do you believe you can prevail in this? Resplendent! Oops. Wings managed to prevail. Mayhap the scribe shall simply <laughs> smite them down next time. Ah, uh, you wish, buddy. The ceremony is coming. Curse you, Gilman! You are full to abandon us, and now you only twist the dagger in our backs. You still do not seem to understand, Sir Deluge. This knight is no longer beholden to the likes of you. This night is bound only by the path toward enlightenment. Your words ring false. You are unfit to lead. Shut up! You know exactly what you are, Gilman. You call this night a craven, yet your courage is a mere facade. And everybody knows, everybody knows this night shall see to it. <laughs> Sir Gilman does not respond, although you sense the words of Sir Deluge got to him. The rights do tend to teach something of trust. Until the next right. If there even is to, be, there another. Even is to be another one. <laughs> Oof. Well, that was fun.
Inside the wagon, after defeating the Pyre Hearts, Volfred is discussing aspects of the outcome with the others when the lone minstrel seeks you out. Pardon the interruption, reader, though I need to ask a moment of your time while the night is clear enough for you to see. Please, come have a look outside. Perhaps the news of your next destination may further stir the hearts of your companions. Among what stars yet remain shining in the night, one of them now burns as bright as ever you have seen. Yep. Back again to Solium. Who are we facing there? Ah, yep, the fate. I kind of figured. By now, most of the triumvirates whom we have faced no longer have any real chance of earning sufficient favor to regain their freedom. Perhaps we were always due to share the same fate. Oof. Ha. Fate. The fate. Fate. Ha. Sorry. <laughs> The cycle turns even more quickly now, until such time as it shall sh shudder to a halt. He makes a sound then, almost like a laugh. I forget myself, reader. I should not say such things. The scribes, they would say that one ought to focus on the path in front of her. When we set forth to walk a long and labored path, it can be all too much if we stand back and look upon it as a whole. We may well decide to turn around. But if we begin to walk, Whilst casting down our gaze, and whilst resisting well the urge to look too far ahead, we may make steady, careful progress. Some sort of Soon enough, we may arrive where we endeavored. The lone minstrel bids you a good evening. You had best retire for the night, for when first daylight comes, it shall be time again to take to the skies. <laughs> oh, okay, well, let's check out the book first then. The Pyre Hearts all follow in the path forged by the Underking Oris, whose many mighty deeds exceed the smaller stature that somehow contained him. His is the most spirited triumvirate, their courage unfaltering, their hearts full. They live always with vigor, and perhaps they die with it as well. They are the Underking's own kind, as at home above the sea as in it, never ceasing, ever longing, as they do, for something more. The Underking chose wisely for these qualities, and teaches that a life devoid of passion is a life devoid of life itself. That burning passion is the fuel that drives the Pyre Hearts, and in turn, us all. I like how we've got trash building up here. <laughs> Sir Gilman is in a contemplative mood. He has been rather quiet, at least more than usual, ever since his confrontation with Sir Deluge. He notices you there, and slides forth in a solemn manner. Miss Knight, he knows what he shall do now, when all of this is over, Master Rita. We worm knights. We all are born and raised to prove ourselves superior to all the other billions of our kind, to lead our lives, however short, with glory. From the moment we shove past our whirling brethren in their exacts to the very end, we are conditioned to excel, to prevail at all costs. This relentless pursuit of glory, of fame, of self-worth, it leads most of this night's kind only to an early doom, or in the case of Sir Deluge, it leads to a life of falsehood, a life of low deceit, abusing one's fellow worm knights, shirking one's responsibility, living in constant fear. This knight cannot abide his former commander, yet pities him. There must be more to honor than to lead a life engulfed in endless conflict. Then he looks at you intently. This knight shall ever seek that honor out when all of this is ended, Master Rita. Thus he vows to you, and he is ever grateful that your guidance led him to this new awakening. But until such time, this knight is duty bound under the night wings. Thus, the fulfillment of our plan and our pursuits of freedom is to be his final quest. Hmm, 70%. For what awaits him afterward is no mere quest. The honor that this knight has sought, it cannot fully be achieved through knighthood, can it? It requires something more. I trust you understand. He slithers off, his head held high, though not merely in pride. 
something has changed in him. Plus two presence permanently. Neat. Alright. The dragon reels from the impact of some sort of massive object slamming into it mid-flight. False night wings! Orlek calls down to all of you from atop his wagon. Again you seek to climb that cursed mountain beneath us. Again you seek to take my rightful place. I should send you crashing down to it that you might fall as I have. He stares down at all of you. But I shall not. Rather we shall meet upon the summit. Ere the last cycle of the rites is ended. Until then. Oof. Well. <laughs> uh, Tizo can gain favor over here. Or Gertrude over here. Let's go with Tizo. You make landing on the sacred Mount Elodiel after your encounter with Orlac. Orlex spoke the truth. He has a right to gain the summit. When the time comes, Celeste shall deem him worthy and shall let him pass. While he has transgressed against the rites, he has also already been anointed and prevailed. Nothing is written in the book on this, and liberty ought already be his. For the time, it seems that he has not yet traveled to the summit. Perhaps he is still making preparations with his fellow exiles. When exactly Orlek intends to make good on his promise, he did not make clear. For now, you are to confront Dalbert and the fate upon the summit. But first, you may prepare. Alright. Well, let's take Tizo. Later that afternoon, you accompany Tizo through the splendors of Temple Cistern to the monuments of Under King Oris. Hello again, old friend. I know that you and all the scribes are watching over me, and all of us, and I am grateful to you. Huh, interesting. So we get to actually sort of kind of hear Tizo's voice. Your ancient rites are ending soon. I promise you my friends and I will make the most of our last two chances here. Ah, this one and the next one. Yep. You return to the wagon after he's finished paying his respects. The summit awaits, but first there is time to continue practicing your vocations. Plus three glory. Nice. Well, let's do some mentoring then. Um, I want to have somebody leveled up as much as they. So it's either going to be Gilman, Tizo, Wolfred's mm, a bit too far off, and Bertrand's a bit too far off, I think. So, how much more does he need? 970, I think. And that's enough. This knight shall be your eager protege! Sir Gilman gains a somewhat stronger grasp of how to better pass the celestial orb through strength of will and trust in one's triumvirate than through dexterity alone. He nods in understanding. Yeah, plus a thousand. This knight is the epitome of indomitable spirit! He has achieved the culmination of his training! How wonderful a feeling, having nothing left to learn, Master Reader! Nothing whatsoever! This knight highly recommends it! <laughs> His adorable little heart eye. Ah. Alright, and what mastery do we want to pick for him? So we've got the uh, seized chance, after banishing adversary, 10 additional nah. Um, freeze all exiles for three seconds with a salute. I don't like the salutes. They're not really that helpful. Uh, quick draw. After using his... Ooh, that's good. I might take that. Or greater cleave. Banish his adversaries in a wider area of effect. Hmm. These are both really good. I 
its colors quite dry. When this knight grasps the orb, his instincts then take hold, spurring him to greater feats of glory. All right, Gilman. Oh, Tizo. Tizo seems to be in the midst of conversation with the lone minstrel as you approach the two of them. The little limp appears perturbed about something. And above all, he was very, very loyal. Fiercely so, in fact. All throughout the land knew better than to underestimate him, in spite of his little stature. In that respect, Tizo, and in many others, I might add, your great-grandfather was very much like you. Tizo seems to be asking the lone minstrel to confirm he is not playing some sort of prank. Hi, I am being serious. Have you known me to be the jesting sort? <laughs> Tizo seems to be admitting the lone minstrel has always been sincere with him. Just so. Then please, do not denigrate yourself, for you are not only his heir, but you are my remaining link to him, and thus to all needs. And, more importantly, you are my friend. <laughs> Tizo is grateful to the lone minstrel for his kind words and considers him a friend as well. The Nightwings need you now, more so than ever. Then the lone minstrel turns to you. Is that not so, Rita? <laughs> Agree that Tizo is invaluable. Heartily concur. Tizo not only is, a, is of importance to the group, but seems to need a boost of confidence. Or, the Nightwings is an institution greater than any given member of the group. Nah. You concur with the Lone Minstrel's assessment of Tizo as a most remarkable and irreplaceable member of the group. He is an extraordinary imp indeed. At this, Tizo rushes up to you and gives you an imp hug. Aww, precious baby! <laughs> Tizo is grateful to you for your kindness and your support of him. Tizo bounds off happily as the Lone Minstrel looks on. And there he goes. Thank you indeed, reader. Tizo sometimes loses sight of all that makes him special, a quality uncharacteristic of his kind, but not so much uncommon among yours. Once there was a time when he was the sole imp able to conduct the rites. Since then, however, other triumvirates have found imps with the capacity for it. They make for useful allies, no? More than willing to conduct the rites, whilst having no desire to leave this place. Although, little Tizo does have dreams of visiting the Commonwealth. In any case, I am certain he shall continue to serve the Nightwings faithfully. The lone minstrel bows his head on his way out, bidding you a good rest of the afternoon. Plus one hope for next week. Alright, back up to the gate. A messenger imp somehow tracks you down in the narrow passageways of Mount Avodio and delivers to you recent news and rumors from the other side. Specifically, the imp shares details regarding Pamatha and what became of her since she was liberated at the fall of Solion. She found herself back in the homeland of her enemies, where, despite her connection to the High Wing remnants, her past transgressions were forgiven. In fact, she was asked to join the military council given her unique background, yet she refused to cooperate and instead demanded to be reunited with her sister, Tamitha. But when they threatened her with a re-sentencing to exile, and insisted that she should take the opportunity, Tamitha said at last that she would think it over, and return with a decision soon. Next she was seen, however, was among Volfred's sons and daughters of the Resolution, where it is said she has attached her loyalty, at least for the time. You thank the imp for bringing you this news, which soon gets your companions talking. We suspect the ancient enmity between the winged and the flightless shall not soon be resolved, if ever at all. Hmm. Tiso wishes for Pamela to find her way and her sister in the Commonwealth. I wonder where her sister is right now. I'm sure she cares for Pamela. I'm sure of it. Never once before had this knight felt even a thing for our most bitter enemies, and yet, and yet, having known Pamela proved eye-opening indeed for this knight. I hold hope that both the Thane sisters one day shall join together as part of our good cause. The two of them can help lead us toward a brighter future. 
In spite of some mixed feelings, the news of Pamela's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with resolve. Plus one hope. Alright. You are returned once more to Scribescape, where the Gate Guardian awaits under a dim sky. The exiles of Nightwings, and you, Tariq. This is to be one of our final meetings. Greetings, Celeste. The Nightwings are prepared, and afterwards I would have words with you in private if you please. It seems to be rather late for words now, Tariq, but I shall hear them once your charges cross the gate. Now, all of you, come forth. Please state your names and what it is you seek whilst crossing your scribe's gate. Once more, your companions cross the gate, one after another, and once more you follow them in turn. Celeste regards you all, then waves you through toward the summit. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Go forth with glory. And Tariq. I, Celeste. You may rejoin the others in a while. For now, I would hear those words of yours. Certainly, Celeste. Everyone, I shall see you shortly. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> they're singing really sing. they're singing really is pretty but with that i think we're going to call it the end of this episode so thank you so much for watching everyone uh be sure to come back next time to see our next liberation right and who gets to go back up to the surface uh, for now, if you'd like, you can always uh, subscribe to us or drop us a comment or check down in the doobly-doo. If you want to uh, contact me on Twitter or Tumblr, you can find the links there. Or if you want to support us with, you know, some monetary support to help with food and medicine and whatnot. And also, you know, keeping this running. Uh, you can always check out the Patreon and the PayPal there. Above all, be good to each other. And thank you for watching.